Hey friends, welcome back to the channel. If you are new here, my name is Alex and today we're going to talk about multi-factor authentication in Spring Boot. So this is actually the first out of two videos where I give a brief overview of how multi-factor authentication actually works. And then we're going to build a brief proof of concept where we generate a shared secret and then create a simple endpoint that renders our QR code with our secret included. As usual, you will find the timestamps in the description below, so you can just jump to the parts that are most interesting to you. Multi-factor authentication usually comes in play whenever you want to offer your user something beyond just the password, so a second factor. And that can be provided by using hardware devices, such as this YubiKey or software. And for software, we're gonna create one-time passwords. And not just any, but usually they are time-based one-time passwords. And the special flavor that we are going to talk about today is the Google Authenticator provided codes. And this is because there's just such a wide adoption of Google Authenticator. So let's start with a little bit of background first. Usually the way that these time-based one-time passwords work is by creating a shared secret on the server and then exchanging that with the client using our QR code. Both the client and the server can then just apply a hashing function and the current system time to figure out the currently valid code. And this of course requires the client and the server to be sufficiently synchronized, not with each other, but to a common clock. But in practice, that's usually not a problem. So the properties of the Google Authenticator generator that we are gonna use is that it's using the HMAKSHA1 hashing function. It's providing six digit codes. That's why you always see these six digits. And it is using a time window of 30 seconds. So that means every 30 seconds, you will find a new code being generated. So there's one more thing that we need to talk about. Whenever you see a QR code and you scan it, that of course contains the shared secret, but it also contains some more information like your email usually, or the name of the service that you are using. And this URI is formatted as follows. So we can see it here specified. It starts with a protocol, which is OTP auth colon slash slash type. And the type in our case is TOTP, which stands for time-based one-time password. Then there's usually the name of the service that we're going to use, followed by the identifier of the user, usually the email, and then it comes the secret, which is usually base32 encoded. And finally, there's the issuer, which is pretty much always the same as the service itself. The libraries that we are going to use are Zebra Crossing, which is a maintenance mode, but which is widely used. I think it also powers the barcode scanning app on Android. You can see that it has a lot of stars. Um, so we're gonna use that to actually create the QR code. And the other library that we will use is the Kotlin one-time password library. Um, there are many libraries out there and you have to just choose one, but this one looks pretty solid and it has all the convenience functions that we actually need to provide a shared secret for Google Authenticator, come up with codes and also validate them. So with that out of the way, let's code. So in the IDE, as usual, we take a look at the build file. Uh, you can see I'm using Spring Boot 250. I'm using the starter web uh, because we want that one endpoint where we just expose the QR code. And then there are the two additional dependencies. Well, it's actually three, but one is for the zebra crossing barcode image processing library, uh, its core, and then the mappings for Java. And the other one is the one-time password library. Now let's go to the application directly and get started. Go away. So let's make sure that we have a lock because we want to see something. As usual, factory get router and then it's the application. So at this point we can actually create a shared secret and Usually there will be a shared secret for every user, but we just create one for the whole application because there's just gonna be one. That's called secret, and we can just invoke the Google Authenticator class, say create random secret. That is gonna create a 16 byte secret that will be eventually encoded as a base32 string. And then let's just simply lock our secret because we need a way of knowing that ourselves. So let's just run this quickly to see that everything works. And as usual, it looks good. And here it is, that's a secret. All right, so now let's make sure that it also works in a time-based fashion as we would expect. 
So what we can do is actually come up with a task. So I'm just schedule something very quickly. Um, scheduled something to run at a fixed rate of one second. And let's make sure that it's just that's just providing us the currently generated code. So we have a way of verifying that it's valid. So the timestamp is what we're going to need. Uh, it's date on the system current time medis. And I need to import the Java util date. And the next one is the code. Uh, we can say Google Authenticator um, with the secret and then generate a code with a current timestamp. That should provide us with a code and then we can just lock the code. Now let's run this. And by the way, if you're not familiar with the scheduling I've just used, then check out my other video where I explain how you can actually set up tasks in Spring Boot. And here we can see a six digit code that's valid and it has already changed. So that looks pretty decent. So the next step now is making sure that we can generate a QR code, expose that, make sure that it works in the Google Authenticator app. So we start with a QR code writer that is coming from the zebra crossing library. Uh, that's gonna be a bean because we will need it in another component. Um, QR code writer. And that's really just a QR code writer. And then we set up a new component. We're gonna use that in the in the upcoming video where we then will discuss how we can use multi-factor authentication together with Spring Boot, Spring Security, have a real flow of setting up multi-factor authentication and also resetting it and all the fluff around it. So let's call this code generator. Uh, it's gonna use the writer that we've just created. And what will it use? It will just generate. And now we're providing all the parameters that you've seen in the key URI format. So there is the issuer, which is a string, there is an email, which is a string, and there's of course the secret that we're gonna use. Um, and we will return a buffered image already because this is what eventually will be rendered. So let's use URI. So the URI is just the format that we've been using. I have a shortcut for that. So as I said, it's the protocol. Um, it's what we're using here, the time-based, one-time password, the issuer, email, secret, and issuer again, because that's what we have there. And with that, we can create a matrix with all the information. So let's use the writer, and then we encode the URI, and now we have to specify the format, which is gonna be QR code. Come on, QR code. So on. And now we have to specify the dimensions of the barcode. So we go with 200 times 200. That should be sufficient to, to see it on the screen. And then we say matrix to oh, image, oh, image writer to buffered image, and then just hit the matrix. So that wraps up the code generator already. And this is all the code that we need to fill the URI template and create the actual image. So the final part is now to come up with an endpoint that is rendering that image in the browser so we can take a photo and set everything up in the Google Authenticator. So let's go. We are gonna use RS controller and it's called uh, barcode controller. It will need our generator. Oh no, private uh, generator. Is this one and it will have just one mapping. Uh, we call it barcode. And then I put the secret as a path parameter so we can, or as a path variable, so we can use that to test different secrets if we want. And one thing that we have to make sure is that we produce, it's an array, produces image. PNG, okay, that doesn't work. So the class actually is user type. 
and then it should be image png value. So that's the one. From barcode, we map the path variable, which is called secret, and it's the string. And it will return a buffered image. And all we have to do now here is return generator, generate. Okay, the issue is the spring boot MFA app. So email is my email. Say hi if you want. And the secret is the secret that's specified over here. So let's run the application again. We can see that it starts up nicely. Um, there's the current secret. We pick this one. We can see that codes are being generated. So let's check the endpoint. If we now go to localhost 8080 and then go to barcode and add the secret, then we can see we see an internal server error. So we apparently made a mistake or I made one. So let's check that. So we can see that we got a handler exception resolver message. So, oh yeah, there's no converter. So that means we return a buffered image, but there's actually no converter to take care of that. So we just have to provide a HTTP message converter that's taking a buffered image and turning it into a valid HTTP response. So let's go. Got this and then we call it image converter. And that's gonna be a HTTP message converter for a buffered image. And we just return the buffered image HTTP message converter. And that should already work. So let's just try again. Application starts. We of course have a new secret over here. So we have to pick this. Let's change that. And there is a QR code. So let's take a quick photo of that QR code and see if everything works. So I'm just using the Google Authenticator and I'm scanning the QR code. And we can see the code is 301661. And now let's check the logs. This is exactly the same code that the server has just generated. So that already works. All right, and that wraps up the first video on using multi-factor authentication and Spring Boot. As you've seen, it's really easy to pull it off using the shared secret, using the libraries, and then just creating the QR code. In the next video, we will see how we can make this work using Spring Security and a full user onboarding flow. If the video doesn't appear on the screen anywhere just yet, just make sure to subscribe so you don't miss it. That's it for today. Thank you for watching, stay healthy, and I'll see you in the next one.